want to explain, and there's so many of my clients that are at this stage where they've been through so much healing and they get frustrated along the way, saying, how much more do I have to do? I've been doing this for years. The beautiful thing is whatever you have done for yourself has never gone to waste. Think of it as we're these beautiful beings of light. We truly are, and that's what we are. We are, and we're already magnificent. We're perfect. But we've come in with some heavy contracts for some of us, things we wanted to do. Just think of it like this. You're all knowing, but you can call it heaven or, or you know, and you can call it whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. But when you're just your, your higher self, your soul, when you transition off this planet, you're all knowing. You're a beautiful being with all this knowing. But when you take a, I say, I'm going to come onto earth and I'm going to experience a human life to learn and grow because this is 3D where you can really feel and that's where time comes in and things. So we, some of us choose some pretty big contracts, missions, let's say. And when you're all knowing, it's like, yeah, I can do it, it's fine. But what happens is when you're then incarnated and you have this contract that you wrote, your free will was you writing the contract, all right? That's where your free will came in. Everyone's on planet Earth that they're on their free will. I truly believe that you write contracts, who you're gonna meet, what you're gonna learn. Those people who irritate us the most, we have contracts with those people to really trigger and help us grow. So a lot of the people that are in our life that are the most annoying are our biggest teachers. They show us our challenges. They show us, and sometimes we've come together for short periods of time, sometimes long periods of time. Sometimes we come to teach our parents. Sometimes we come for our parents to teach us. So we choose our parents. We choose our siblings. Yes, we do. And sometimes we're like, why? Why would I choose this? Because when you're all knowing, it seems so easy. So here you do, you come into this lifetime, but now you have this thing called amnesia. You're not remembering. Some of us remember a little bit or we start to remember over time, but generally we don't remember. And we start our journey from ground zero, going through life, having our traumas, having our genetic karma come in or spiritual karma, our, our, all that stuff. And you know, you're this beautiful being in your mom's tummy and then all of it comes back, the humanness. And then we're on our journey. And then you come to sometimes in your life, you're like, why did I come back? Why did I choose this? Was I crazy? And if you start getting really connected to that divinity within you, you'll know you chose this, you agreed to this, you wanted this, and your higher self is guiding you to what you agreed to and where you want to go, where you want to learn, where you want to be. The problem with 3D Earth is we're very dense. It's very dense. So we have two parts of us the ego which was supposed to keep us physically safe out of danger and our higher self which was supposed to guide us they both do that but the problem is with 3d world is our ego has more of a say we have more of a, a connection we can hear our ego better than our connection so they're both there and they're both moving us forward the ego is kind of like lost um its main function of keeping us safe and now it wants us to keep us out of any type of, you know, it kind of taken over and it kind of like, don't change, don't do this. It's kind of got this whole fear based, stay where you are, don't do anything because I'm keeping you safe. It just kind of got out of control. So it was there for a reason. It was there to keep us safe. So if we were hunters and there's a lion or a saber tooth tiger that lives in this cave, your ego would say, hey, pay attention. Don't go close to that cave because there is something that is going to eat you next time. So that ego kept you physically safe. So you went hunting, you would remember that. Negative things really stood out for us because negative things kept us safe. You say with two tiger, don't fall off this cliff, don't do that. It's not like today where we have road signs, cliff ahead, this, all these warnings. So we don't need the ego to keep us safe as much as we did back then. But the ego's role kind of went a little bit out of control over time. This is human consciousness. This is evolution, all this stuff. So it evolved into something that is really big and almost negative in a way. But we don't want to hate the ego. It's a part of us. We want to tame it. We want to understand it. We don't want to let it over control us. 
then we have this beautiful connection to divine, the God within us, our connection, our soul. So we're just really a fragment of our soul. This is the body I chose in this lifetime. We we all choose kind of what we look like, who our parents are. So based on that, this is what we're going to look like. This is what we're going to do. And, you know, that connection to us is always there. It's guiding us. But because we're on the 3D plane, which is very dense, we have, it's harder to hear that. And a lot of people who have these inner knowings or they hear their inner guidance will kind of mistaken it as the ego. And sometimes, and this is where my confusion was through most of my life, is I would hear both and there was like a mixed mess. So I was having a very big conflict in my life where it felt like it was light and dark within me, light and dark. But then I was like, like I don't know what's right. And if I lost connection, then it was more my ego talking to me. So my ego would walk me or the darkness within me, the denseness within me would walk me into um, situations where I felt, oh, this must be right for me. I hear it so clearly, but it was just maybe an abusive situation or a situation that was not good for me. But I didn't realize that because there was so much resistance and denseness around me that I couldn't really hear my guides, my my inner being saying, hey, no, 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 do this. So when I first started my healing journey, I was pretty connected probably in my teens and stuff, but I was told don't show anyone this because they're gonna throw you in a crazy place, you know? So I was scared to talk to anyone about what I could see, what I could feel. So I kind of shut it down, but I really shut it down when I just decided I just want to be normal and live life. And that's kind of where my life started to really fall apart. My relationships were not good. My health started to fall apart. My finances were a mess and my life just got into more chaos and chaos and chaos. And at one point I just thought, okay, I need to leave this sort of thing because it doesn't even make sense to me because I was so unconnected to who I really was. And that's where I just surrendered one day. And I said, okay, God, if I'm meant to be on this planet, keep me, but show me. I. I realized whatever I've been doing is, is not right. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And the very next day, I uh, started, um, I, life just changed. I can write a book on it. The amazing, like one, two, three, four, when you ask, you will receive. But before that, very interestingly, I was at a place where I was so messed up. The only reason I asked for help is I started seeing 911 everywhere. 911 on license plates, on clocks, everywhere, 911. So then I thought, oh, I'm going to die. That's what this is all about. I, I, so that's when I started to pray and ask, help me. And then something, there was guidance the very next day that said, read what 911 means. I'm like, read it. How do you read what 911 means? So I went online and I checked, what does 911 mean if you're seeing it? And there was like all these things popping up of what it is. And I thought, Oh my gosh there's there's people that know this so i was a little scared because i thought it meant i was going to die 911 to me like ah urgent anyway when i read it it just said this is an urgent message from your guides to wake up now urgent message and i could see why because my health was failing i was having kidney issues and uh other issues and i just was not feeling well and then boom 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 it, the rest is history, but my journey has been long and it's been tedious and I want to give up many times along the way and I've learned tons of lessons along. But what did my guide show me is that fear can be overcome just by that connection and knowing that the light is here. So I've come to a point where I'm not going to say I have no fear because fear is still kind of lays up, but I know how to, when it comes into play, how to deal with it. I've kind of really learn that when you ask for help, it's there. What we're going to go through today is go through a lot of the tips and tricks that have helped me through my life. So when I was on my healing journey, a lot of people weren't on it. It wasn't as common as it was today. I give a lot of my healing to Dr. Beatty and beam therapy. I love this woman and she's a medical doctor. So I only got one hour with her every three weeks. And after that, I was on my own. So when you start this healing journey and things start to come out, you can be very sad, depressed, anxious. You don't know what's happening. So I was having such bad like releases 
and I know one to talk to. So that's where I started to learn on my own. I started to investigate, learn methods, do this and do that. And when I would go see Dr. Beatty, I would try to tell her everything that happened three weeks. We only had an hour to do beam therapy. So it was a quick little session of talking and then let's get into it. And then you're on your way. So I like to be a little, again, she's a medical doctor, I love her. And you can't just call a medical doctor and say, hey, I really need to talk to someone, I'm losing my mind. But uh, it was part of my journey to learn this. So what we're gonna go through is this type of stuff that helped me go through it. So I call it my toolbox. Now, what's in my toolbox? There are many things. And some days this works for me, and some days this works for me, and some days this works for me. So I just kind of go through, okay, I feel like I'm gonna use this, see how it works. Oh no, I'm way too out there, I need something else. Or you have to repeat it. The one thing when you start this journey and you start doing stuff for yourself is at first it has a very small effect. And you're like, oh, that didn't feel good. I was tapping and we're gonna do tapping today, probably closer to the end, but tapping, I used to do it 50 to 100 times a day, almost obsessively. But I was in such a bad place. I'm tapping myself. Oh my God. And it would bring me to an okay place. Then I have to tap again and tap again. But the beauty of it is it's just like muscle memory. It's energetic memory. Then as time went on, as I did a tapping session, the effects of it would last instead of just five minutes. It was an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Now, if I just do this, I'm going to tap. My whole body knows what I'm going to do. My energy. And it's like I tap for two minutes and I have this whole calmness so the thing is you don't want to give up because the more you use these things the stronger they are so and that's your toolbox and then you can use it to help yourself you can use it to help your family you may want to get your kids involved in it but you don't have to the beauty of all this stuff because it's energy work is intention let's say and this is what made me love eft tapping which is also called the emotional freedom technique is say if my child was having a temper tantrum in another room I would focus on him because it was bothering me, obviously, and my kids freaking out. I don't know what to do. I would go in the other room and I would start tapping for my child, saying so and so he's going to feel calm. He's feeling loved. He's letting go, whatever he's like. And all of a sudden, his temper time would just settle down, even just after one session. And my, but then the kids energetically know you're doing something. So they'll say, stop doing that because they want to be mad. But it's that darkness within them that wants to be angry because that anger then kind of upsets the whole household. And that's what the darkness in all of us wants to do. It wants to trigger someone else's darkness. It wants to bring the energy of a whole house down. So as you start to notice that there's a light within me and there's a darkness within me, you think, okay, who's playing here? Which one's playing? So when you start to realize the more work you're doing, what we're doing in essence is we're letting go some of that dark energy. We're bringing in light energy. So our vibration is shifting. Our light quotient is increasing. And every time you're doing work, you're doing the next level and the next level. So I've shown this chart before, and I'm not going to show it today, but what's happening is shame embarrassment is the lowest vibration it's like depression it's close to death but as you start to raise up the darkness lessens and the light comes in you're moving into anger frustration hopefulness and it just keeps getting better and better to joy happiness so as you're doing this it's kind of like this average so you're still going to go up and down but where is your average at my average before was always at depression sadness close to death i had i could smile i had smiling depression so this is the thing where people didn't know I was suffering. I just let the world say, hey, look, Brenda's great. But inside I was falling apart. And a lot of us who have responsibilities will do that. We'll just hold it together because we have to, but inside we're falling apart. But what we want to get to is a place where you're holding together for the outside, but you're just doing it naturally because you're healthy, connected, and vibrant inside. And we all are, it's just hiding underneath that resistance. So we're gonna to start to pull that out. And that's a lot of you are on those calls that we do. A lot of you are doing your own things. So you're always chipping away. So never give up on you, follow where your heart takes you. And one thing I wanna just kind of bring up is it's kind of come up in a few, few of my sessions recently, is some people, and, and this happened to me as well, we will choose wrong practitioners. And the, this field, like any other field, has good and the bad in it. I'm not going to get into too much detail, but what I want to let you know is when we choose those bad ones and we invest our time, our money, thinking they're helping us when they're not, 
That's because in that state, when we found them, we were so low that we kind of attracted that person. And it sometimes it's an abusive relationship without us knowing it. We think we're going for healings, but they're not doing some nice things. But over time, our inner being kind of, guys, get away from this person. And there's something that lights up and we slowly edge away from that person. But then there's this realization, how did I let that happen? How did I let this relationship happen? How did I let that happen? And then there's shame, guilt, embarrassment. I went through that too, because I was like, I'm a pretty smart girl. How did I let that happen? But there's so many things playing in the background. Our vibration, our thoughts, our belief systems, our patterns of behavior, our lack of love, lack of deserving, all that's playing in the background. So although, yeah, I'm educated in this and that, and still I was brought to that person. It's kind of, you know, it's sometimes it's just an attraction. And at that time, sometimes it's just lessons to be learned. What I've come to terms with is everything that I've ever experienced was never a mistake. It has brought me to where I am now. So I love the version of Brenda that was me, that has gone through all that stuff and brought me to where I am now because now I get it. I just went through that because that was something I needed to go through. So love yourself, forgive yourself, and just move on and just work on you and getting better. And don't invest your time in the past because when we invest our time in the past, we lower ourselves to that energy. So I don't talk about my past anymore. I mean, I I could write a book on it. Maybe one day I will, who knows? But what I always find is that energy is such a lower energy where I was. I just bless it, let it go. And now when I wake up in the morning, I say, okay, what am I going to do that's exciting and new for me? What's what's the day going to look like? What's going to happen that's going to excite me? These little miracles, of, they're very tiny sometimes, but they're great. And that's what I focus on every day. But how do you do that? It's training the thoughts in your head. So enough talking. Anyone have any questions before we start? I mean, this was already starting. And just so you know, we're not doing an energy session today. But if you feel it, you can actually feel we're all being surrounded by beings of light because I feel this beautiful energy just bringing us calmness to a place where we can absorb the information, have an open heart and go from there. All right. All right. So like I said, so yesterday these shuffled into a different, uh, a different order. So here we go. So we're just going to go with the flow. If it doesn't make sense, I'm going to go repeat it and we'll go through that. So we're just, this is a quick overview that came to me. We're just going to have an introduction, which we just did. Um, We're going to talk about energy balancing. And these are things that you can do at any time of the day for yourself. So that's really cool. We're going to talk about Ho'oponopono. And some of you already know about this, but we're just going to remind you to use it. It is phenomenal. I have to remind myself to use it when I'm then. Affirmations, uh, EFT tapping, and then choice and mindset. You create your own reality. So The one beautiful thing to remember is, let's just say someone was thrown into jail. Let's just say somebody was in a situation they didn't like. The one thing no one can take away from you is your thoughts. And your thoughts are powerful and they can create your reality. So it's really quite powerful. So right now, we're just gonna do a bit of a breathing exercise. And I would just like you to allow a deep breath and take your deep breath on how you feel comfortable. So you're just breathing in very gently and allowing it to come in and have this affirmation kind of going in the background. I am ready to learn new things that make sense to me, uh, that may not make sense to me. So a lot of the times when I'm learning something, there's resistance in me. My mind doesn't understand it and I find it frustrating. So I usually just say something like this. I'm ready to learn about this new topic. It may not make sense to me, but allow my resistance to dissipate. So I'm just gonna come in with an open mind and see what happens. And then when you start to learn something, it actually sits in your subconscious. So we're talking to your subconscious here. Your mind may not fully understand it, but through practice, you might master EFT or whole ponopono and start to feel like the effects of it. But be gentle and kind and patient with yourself. It's not an overnight thing. I've been doing EFT for 13 years. I love it. Whole Ho'oponopono for about 13 years. And a lot of these other things, probably for the last seven years. And I just add things. This makes me feel good. Or that makes me feel good. I'm going to write it down. And I have this list of things that I can tap into. And I used to put them all into uh, 
a bag and say, okay, angels, help me decide which one should I use? And I would pick one up. Okay, EFT it is. And I would just do EFT because I didn't know I wasn't uh, in tune enough with myself to see what would be best at that time. And then these, uh, I guess, methods or techniques I'm going to show you are very simple exercises. They seem like this. It's going to be a lot of information today. But the neat thing is you don't have to learn it all today. This is going to be on replay. It's going to be sectioned off, hopefully, to say, oh, I want to learn about EFT again, or I want to do whole pono again. So I'll somehow try to say, okay, at this time it's whole pono pono, so you can just zoom through to it. So it's going to help you improve your physical, mental, emotional state when you're feeling misaligned, anxious, just having a bad day generally. We are on planet Earth. And the one thing that a lot of people think, oh, oh, Brenda, you're an energy worker. You've been doing this so long. How could you possibly have anything bad happen to you? I remember one time my son got into a pretty bad car accident. And people were like, well, how did that happen to you? Well, we are on planet Earth. I'm not saying my life's perfect. We have duality. We have polarity. We have polarity. We have experiences. But how did I respond to that car accident? very differently than if I was it what was in that place like say 13 years ago to more recently where I was able to say wow look at the blessings in this accident and no one got hurt look at this you know that's just and I was able to look at it from a broader perspective so life still happens but how you choose to respond to it rather than react to it is really the big key here so I wanted to go through something very simple. These are little techniques that I use just throughout the day if they happened. And I find that this is some of this stuff is coming from some corporate talks I do. If you have a corporate a corporation that would like some wellness chats, I do uh, offer that, but it does not, it's not the same that I speak to you guys in. I speak very corporate language where they can hear it. Um, it's not esoteric and things like that. So it, it seems to do well and I might get into it a bit more. I, I'm not sure where, I'm just following my heart and see where it leads me to. So some of these slides are coming from that. So in the workplace, we can get very frustrated and say if you're at work and you have something to do or even at your home and you have a stress or headache. So we're going to go through some tips that I use for myself and they're very simple. So the first one is this one works and it's so amazing. If you have stress, you can do it to your child. You can do it to yourself. You can ask your spouse to do it. Say someone's working on a computer at work. And I'm, I'm saying this because at work, I was pretty chummy with my my coworkers. So if they said, hey, I'm feeling really stressed out, but I have to get this done and they're working away at their computer, I would just go, do you mind if I put my hand on your forehead? Oh yeah, go ahead. So as they're working away, I just put my hand on their forehead. Now you can do this with me. You can put your own hand on your forehead. It's that simple. Now what's happening here is when you place your hand on your forehead, it is actually interrupting the flight or fight response, which reduces stress. It brings you into a calmer state and it relaxes you. So it starts to bring back the flow of blood more regularly. You'll see a huge difference when you're stressed. So as someone was working, I just had my hand on them and they just got into a calmer state, more clarity, and they're able to finish their deadline without that added stress. But stress can come through so many different ways, not just um, work. It could be you're, you're hearing your kids argue or you know your spouse is upset in the other room. You might just wanna go into a room and just hold your hand on your forehead. Very simple exercise, but it has tremendous benefits to it. I'm just gonna go here. I'm just gonna look at the chat box that's missing here. All right, so right now, as I'm doing this presentation, I can't really see the chat box easily. So if you had a question, want clarification, just unmute yourself and say, hey, Brenda, I have a question. All right, that would be much easier for me. I appreciate that, thank you. So next, all right, let's go to the next one. Okay, so this is an added thing to the stress. Say if you have a headache. Now. I used to get, oh my gosh, if anyone knew me back then, migraines for days, I would be out cold. I remember my son's second birthday, I ended up in bed with a migraine for four days. It was, it was horrible. 
I used to get them all the time. I was on heavy duty drugs for migraines. I rarely get headaches now, sometimes a bit of head pressure. But when I did get headaches, and if I feel one coming on for some reason, I will have one hand on my head and one hand on the back of my head. Now, I don't find this to be the most comfortable position. So I will try to lay down doing this. And I, I don't love it, I must say. But you want to hold your hands in this position for 10 minutes. Now, let's say your child has a headache. Before running to the Tylenol Advil, try this for 10 minutes. Kids kind of respond a lot quicker because they have less resistance. But if you do this to yourself, you'll see the headache will dissipate. So you can do it for yourself. You can do it for someone else. Again, I've done this for coworkers while they were working. So uh, yeah, sometimes I miss that kind of whole aspect of working with corporate because it was lots of fun when I was actually a coworker and I'd say, hey guys, don't worry, let's do this energy thing. We'll all feel better. Um, so they actually gave me great training to uh, allow me to do this type of stuff in the office. So the next one is, and this one works really well with children as well and yourself. So we have two points at the back of the neck, right? I just sort of on the picture. You can feel it yourself right now. So uh, these are known as headache stress points, and they're also the entry point to our electromagnetic energies. What you can do, and, and you really want to be gentle here because it's a very sensitive spot. You can actually feel it when it, you touch it's tender, right? You can just slowly gently massage that area it can help you calm down it can reduce headaches if your child's visibly upset and again be very gentle because it's a sensitive spot until they're more sensitive you may just like lightly just circle do light circles around that area for the child or maybe ask your child if they're old enough to do it to themselves because then they know what pressure would be best for them. Because like, you know, we're all very sensitive. When I do that to myself, I'm very sensitive in that spot. So I would never want anyone pressing hard in that spot for me. But I find myself sometimes when I'm feeling a bit of stress, I just simply massage that and it just kind of just melts away. Again, anytime you start doing these, the effects are going to be less than they are for someone like me who's been doing them a long time because of that energy memory. All right. So um, when I first started doing this stuff, yeah, I got some relief. It was OK, but I never gave up. It builds, it builds, it builds. All right. So just don't give up and keep using it. You'll see the benefit. Some people get benefits right away. We're all very different. Our sensitivity. OK, so here's another one. And this is a spot, it's called the gamut. It's right between, I'm just gonna sh stop sharing my screen for a second because I want you to really see where this is. Okay, so here's your hand, it can be either hand, between the pinky and I guess that's the ring finger. It's kind of a divot that's right in here. All right, can you feel that? It's a divot. So it's tapping in this area, it's called the gamut. And we're gonna be using this in EFT as well. There are some people that tap. So I usually hold my hand like this and I feel and I tap. It's a very powerful spot. Now, some people like to slap it. And I sometimes will do that, but I usually get my fingers and just tap it in there. And how long are you gonna do this? Sometimes <laughs> I do it for a while. But the gamut itself, I would tap it for about a minute this interrupts the body's response to stress and it brings you back to calm. Now, sometimes it can be the other hand. Now, sometimes it really depends. Are you left hand or right hand? It doesn't matter. Sometimes I'll do this one for 30 seconds and move to this one. So we have these things called meridian systems and it's part of our um, energetic system. This one I believe is called the triple warmer. The triple warmer is very powerful. Now, I'm going to give you a tip for the ladies out there. If you're having a hot flash, actually, I'm going to say not just a hot flash, say an, an issue with temperature. Say if you're very cold or you're very hot. If you tap in here, this also has the regulation of temperature. So if you're feeling very cold and you can't warm up, tap in there. If you're having a hot flash and can't cool down, tap in there. Whenever I see someone going through a hot flash, I, mean, I can just tell us, hey, you know what, just tap with me here. Let's tap together. And they'll say, strangely, I feel better. Yeah. So that's kind of a little tip. 
but when you're in a hot flash or you're not feeling, it's hard to remember. So you may want to put a sticky hot flash, tap in the gamut, tap in the gamut. That one's really a neat one. So I'm going to go back to sharing again. I'm just going to drink a bit of water. All right, perfect. Now let's go back. I'm having so much fun. So thank you for being here. I was going to record this alone, but somehow having an audience listening, although no, you're very quiet um, and you can talk anytime, um, it, it's nice to have this, the, you know, people are on the other side. All right, so here we go. So we've done this one. That's the tapping the gamut. Very powerful. And it's funny because I don't even know what slides are going to come on next, okay, because I have no idea. Okay, so... Uh, the importance of clearing, centering, and grounding your energies. Okay, well, you know what? We have an energetic field. We have things that come into our field and they can throw off our systems. It could be that we walked into a room of negative negativity, like, uh, and suddenly everything just kind of goes backwards. So we are affected by other people's energies. We're affected by the environments that we're in and other people's negativity can throw off ours, even if we're in a good mood. The interesting thing on planet Earth, like it's, it's changing, is negativity is very contagious. Right. So and and for some reason, our negativity within us like, yes, more negativity. We go back right down and someone's happiness and the positivity used to be it wasn't as contagious. But nowadays there is a shift because the earth is changing. The fields are changing. Positivity is having much more of an impact than negativity. But we're still at this like really crossroads between the two where they're kind of fighting the energies on the planet. Uh, I don't want to use the word fighting, but they almost are fighting. No, this, no, this, no, this. So, but the light is increasing and it's beautiful. So very interesting. We can be bothered by other people's energies, environmental. So one thing that I know, environmental energies get into our field, artificial energies get into our field, additives and food get into our field, other people's negativity get into your field. So when you start to balance yourself, you're going to create this really nice, clear auric field where you're keeping stable. Now, when our energies are off, what's happening is we're kind of leaving pockets for things to come in. So that's how we can get illnesses or interference of heavier feelings and we can um, lose focus. And there's so many things that can happen when we're not feeling our best, right? So by clearing, centering, grounding our energies, we're pushing out that negativity and going back to that feeling of connection. It's very powerful to stay connected. 